Hey y'all, all you southerners, northerners, easterners, and westerners, and in-betweeners, <laughs> like in the middle of the country, like Iowa. I, I came across this thing on YouTube yesterday uh, to uh, where they were identifying the whitest states in uh, the country. Whitest meaning the highest population, the highest percentage of population of white people in Iowa. What was number one? I think, well, there was Maine, New Hampshire, Vermont, uh, West Virginia, and then the rest were on the other side of the Mississippi. Um, Iowa, Idaho, Wyoming, and Montana. That's not t uh, there There's a jet landing. Oh, wow. That was cool. Wish I could have gotten that. A jet, a jet just landed on 2-9, uh, which is a downhill landing. And I mean, as far as runways go, that's a downhill grade there. So, they, uh, you never see a jet land on 2-9 at Chester County Airport and turn off on the first, you know, off ramp to get off the runway. They always end up going down to the end of the runway because it's all downhill even with their reverse thrusters and the brakes. I don't know if these private jets have spoilers. I imagine they would, but I'm not sure. Yeah, it looks like a Citation. A little one, kind of a small one. Yeah. Anyway, choir practice tonight even though our choir director's nephew just passed away from an aortic aneurysm. And I'll tell you what, when the doctor tells you that there's something wrong with your, especially if you got an aneurysm and on the aorta, it's like, I don't understand. It's a pipe, okay? It carries blood. It's the biggest pipe that carries blood in your body right out of the heart and then distributes it. It distributes the blood to the rest of your body. It's a pipe, cylindrical inch maybe maybe I'm not sure exactly what the dimensions are but it's a pipe so an aneurysm is a weakness on the wall of that pipe we can't fix that <laughs> maybe you should get roto rooter you know the plumbers and say hey listen you guys go to medical school and then come back and we'll talk and figure out how to solve this problem because we've been trying to solve it for decades well over a century we've been trying to solve that problem and they don't have any answers so yesterday, I see my cardiologist uh, for the results of a, uh, an echocardiogram, which is uh, uh, a lot more involved uh, visually and uh, with visual details of your heart. It takes about 20, 20 minutes to half an hour to actually do. And I got one recently, and um, I was told, that's a touch and go. I'll be darned. Wish I could have gotten that. I'm not going to, though. Let's see what kind of airplane this is. Uh, low wing, fixed gear. Pretty hefty sounding engine, though. Just did a touch and go. Uh, and that qualifies for a landing and a takeoff during daytime hours. You can't do a, a touch and go at nighttime and have it count for uh, currency. Anyway, so my cardiologist says that I've got a problem with my heart. My, the aortic valve on the aorta where the heart pumps blood into the aorta, there's a valve there. And the valve on my heart, a good number is 1.5 opening whatever that means, that's a measurement of some kind. Uh, one is borderline as far as how much the valve opens and below one is uh, an area where you start talking about surgery and very unpleasant because I, I don't read much. I'm not up on the subject of heart surgery. I know that the, where I, I, I didn't say I have an aneurysm. Hey. Because I know of 
besides uh, Donna's nephew, the choir director's nephew, there's Bill Paxton, who's a, a very successful actor. I think he died in his 60s as a result of a problem with his aorta. And they were operating on it, and they, they created some kind of tissue to patch up a hole, and it didn't work. Oh, Rodney Dangerfield, same thing happened. They tried a pig, uh, a valve from a pig's heart on him, and that didn't work. Um, he, so he passed away. So Bill Paxton, Rodney Dangerfield, my choir's uh, director's nephew. Oh, and there was the husband of, of a girlfriend that I had many years ago. It's a long time ago. But she was like, I was 42 and I'm just coming off of my unbelievably horrible divorce. And um, I had a common friend with this woman. And uh, so we were introduced by you know, a common friend. And um, she was wonderful. She was really pretty. It was a blind date at 42 years old, you know. She's really pretty. Her husband, she is a PhD in psychology. Her husband was a medical doctor, psychiatrist, meaning he had to go through medical school just like regular, well, he is a regular doctor, but his specialty was psychiatry. He had to be close to 40 when this happened. He had a, um, an aortic aneurysm. And they just had this beautiful little daughter, really sad. Uh, and he woke up one morning in desperate pain and panic and agony. And Laura, who was the, the woman that was his wife at the time, got him to the hospital, went into the operating room, and she never talked to him again, apparently. Uh, they opened him up. You know, there was, an, there was a weakness in the wall of the aorta where the heart connects to it. It's a pipe. <laughs> I don't understand. I mean, you could just put a, a wow, well, you know, if to repair it, you know, you've got to connect the tissue with other tissue in the aorta, and that's got to be compatible. And there's a lot that goes into it. I, I mean, I get that. Just one of those things they've been working on forever. So anyway, my cardiologist tells me yesterday on my next e, uh, echo EKG, which is going to be uh, early June, end of May, and um. He says, if you're, he says, my, the opening in that valve is down to one. He said, if, if it goes below one, then we got to start thinking about how we're going to repair it. I'm like, repair the valve in my heart? I haven't heard too many good stories about that. I've heard none. So that's a moment of truth that's rapidly approaching for me. And um, I will see where it goes, you know. There's no, there's no predict, there's no guarantees. Just that the future is going to work out good. So, make the best. You know, I, I, uh, I try to make people smile and laugh, and uh, that's my goal. That's a daily goal that I have. So, for example, I got this cup of coffee at Dunkin' Donuts about 30 minutes ago, and the girl that waited on me at the window. She only had the window open a little bit, and I asked her if she was cold. She goes, yeah, man, the wind's blowing right through here, but she had like an open neck, like a, almost like a tank top. It's, today's January 18th, 2023. It's about 1.30 in the afternoon. 1.30, actually it's qu quarter or two in the afternoon. And then I told her, I said, well, listen, uh, if you want, you can have the shirt that I have on. <laughs> I would, I would have given it to her, and she just laughed and said, ah, no, nah, I don't want it. You know, I'll be okay, I'll manage and everything. I said, well, you know, you, know, you want, you want to, don't want to catch pneumonia or cold, you know, you can have my shirt. And then I told her, I said, my shirt would look a lot better on you, probably. And she laughed and smiled, so that's a good day for me. That's a really good day for me. You know, I, I, I made this girl that I don't even know, I made her laugh and smile. If you can do that on a regular basis, you realize your existence is worthwhile because you're bringing some joy some happiness and some humor and some light you know laughter and happiness into somebody else's life and that that's a beautiful thing that's grace in my opinion that's one of the definitions of grace is making other people 
you know, on the job, on a dead end job, probably minimum wage, make them smile and laugh for the day. And I'll take that, you know. Mm. What else is happening today? Oh, Tesla's numbers are a week from today on the 25th. That'll be an important day. I have never seen a company with this kind of activity, uh, stock trading activity. I, I suppose Apple was for a while. You know, it was like three years after the iPhone was announced, though, before that, <laughs> the value of the products in that company really grabbed, it really started getting embedded and, and taking a um, solid position in the industry and really turning over the industry, the communications industry. You know, telephone systems that businesses used to have to buy. If you were a business, say you had 100 people and they all needed their own phone, you had to buy what's known as a PBX, a private exchange. It's this very expensive uh, telephone system that, you know, you put into a business and it's got a receptionist station, but it also has direct inward dial. You don't have to go through the reception. You can, receptionist, you can go straight to the desk of the person you're trying to reach on one of those 100 extensions. Those things were massively expensive, man. And, you know, you had to pay for maintenance and upkeep and everything else. Well, now that expense is gone. And the companies that made that stuff, which were Nortel, Lucent, Alcatel, they're gone. <laughs> And I tell you what, man, that, there's a lot of people that work for those companies. That, that industry is gone, thanks to Steve Jobs. Thank you, Steve Jobs. Makes, makes business, conducting a business easier. Although I don't know if it's that much cheaper for everybody to have their own smartphone, but I think it's more efficient. Mm. My dog is getting restless. He wants to get out of the car, take a little spin around, and then we're going to head home, so... Tonight we go to choir, choir practice. This should be a, an emotional evening, you know. Anyway, um, peace out, you all. I, you know, we, we still haven't had a real winter here. You know, it's pretty pretty amazing. It's like, it's like right now it's like 52, 53 degrees, January 18th, 2023. And um, 52 degrees? <laughs> uh, I remember winters when I was a kid being a whole lot more severe and harsh than this, but okay. It's the world we live in. Peace.